Uh, so I'm gonna uh, call up on the stage uh, the owner of this place, uh, our uh, brother Talha Bak. Talha Bak will introduce our uh, guest today. Assalamu alaikum wa Buffalo Bashi. We have a special guest here today, and uh, he is very kind enough to give his special time and his busy schedule. Out of his busy schedule, he's thinking about the community and uh, he prioritized this community. He obviously, he finds this very serious, and he sees the sincere fact that this is important to have this conversation about housing. As many of us know, 70 to 80% of the Bangladeshi community that's here are homeowners. And the, the facts that some of us are facing are you know, a lot of violations, a lot of different things that we don't know what, how to handle these matters, and sometimes it tends to escalate and situations that we are aware of, some th situations we're not aware of. Like some of the situations, like some of you guys, does anybody know that you need a landlord class to own, you know, there is a class that you could take for a landlord. Does anybody know about that? Does anybody know that it's free, the city provides that? So Mr. Howard Cardwell will provide that information and give you that so you can be a better landlord, because I know it's an American dream for everybody to own a home but it can also be a nightmare if you fall into Mr. Howard Cardwell's table. And these are the things that this, uh, since he is uh, a fair housing officer and he can, he can actually come at any one of us at a federal level, not a city level, but a federal level. So definitely this is a serious matter and this is a matter that I think has been, everybody wants and needs to hear about because it could come at you without you even knowing Certain situations, uh, Mr. Cardwell had given me some examples were very, very uh, interesting because it was some simple stuff are being mistaken. Even myself, I had some simple stuff that was mistaken and that escalated. So these things we can avoid by knowing what to do. And here he is going to represent us like, again, he doesn't have to do this. He's doing this just to help and for the community. I asked him to come and help us during non-business hours. He said there's nothing else he could do besides business hours, but still he's here today at six o'clock after business hours with his personal time. So let's give him a round of applause, everybody, for making the time to be here. Mr. Carl Hardwell, again, he's gonna be giving us a speech about housing. He's a fair housing officer at a federal level uh, that he can prosecute anybody at, at a federal state level, that means that if you get to his state, people would need really more money than what you invested in your house to hire lawyers to get out of that mess. So we don't want to be in that mess, right? So the good thing is Mr. Cardwell is gonna share some information after that. We're gonna do a Bangladeshi translation of any questions you guys have. We'll, we'll be addressing to him that right after that, he's willing to answer some questions. He'll give you information about his website, uh, we'll have some questions and answers with him. Again, thank you so much, sir, for your time. And we have our captain uh, champion here also and his team, Sri uh, um, uh, Monte. Everybody, thank you. And uh, sir, uh, three, uh, Officer Threets, thank you so much for coming again. And uh, thanks. To, uh, let's give these guys a round of applause also. They're also putting their special time here to be with us. And uh, with that, I'm going to give it to Mr. Carl Harwell. Good evening, everybody. Um, I do appreciate you taking the time out to come and get this information. I do understand it's during your religious time of Ramadan, so I am respectful for that, but also because of the circumstances that have been taken about, we need to make sure we address these things. I am here on behalf of our mayor of the city of Buffalo, Byron W. Brown, as well as the chairman of Bureau and the vice chairman, Brendan Mahaffey, I'm here to also help you understand that these rules and regulations that I'm making sure that you have access to is to eliminate the circumstances that ends up getting me involved in your situations. Um, here in the city of Buffalo, 2006, Mayor W. Brown, Byron W. Brown, let me correct myself, has instituted a fair housing law. It started in 2006. And if all of you look right on the table, you have some pamphlets that are right in front of you that specifies what the fair housing law here is in the city of Buffalo. 
There's also a website that's available for you to get additional information. How many of you have your cell phones? Pull out your cell phones. Let me see. All right, I want you to pull them out and go to Google. Right now. That way it'll help us go through all of this. And Everybody go to Google. Type in B as in boy, U as in up, R as in red, A as in app. Buffalo. B-U-R-A Buffalo. It should have came up. Buffalo Urban Renewal Agency. Click on the website icon right underneath it. Then you look in the top left-hand corner of your cell phone. It should be three bars. Click on it. It should drop down to multiple departments. You will see a department on there that says fair housing and compliance. Everybody got it? All right. Now, also, when you go to that website, it has a section there that says select your language. Click it and see what happens. It goes into 125 languages. All right? And if you look on there and you press select your language, you will see Bengali on there also. It will turn that whole page into Bengali. So that way there's no reason why anyone can't understand. Okay? Has everyone seen it? So now go to... B U R A Buffalo. Go through Google, Firefox, whatever particular search engine that you use. Type in B U R A Buffalo. Underneath it, it should come up. You click the website icon underneath it. Then in the top left hand corner of your cell phone, it should be three bars. Click on the three bars, it'll drop down to multiple departments. Click on the words that say fair housing and compliance. Everybody got it so far? All right. And then there's a multitude of information there. It talks about tenants' rights. It talks about the laws in the city of Buffalo, Erie County, New York State, and the federal government. It tells you all the different laws. The city of Buffalo's law was first in 2006. Well, actually, in 1968, the federal government's law was first. Then the city of Buffalo's came out in 2006. 2018 was the Erie County law. Then in 2019, actually June 14, 2019, New York State put out what is called the New York State Tenant Protection Act. It is important for every landlord and every tenant to read that information. It's important, it's very factual, it will help you not have to see me. If you follow those rules and regulations and those laws, if you understand what's there, you won't have the problems. It talks about what a tenant should do and also what the responsibilities of a landlord are. It tells you what should be in an apartment, what shouldn't be in an apartment, when a landlord can be in an apartment, when he can't be in an apartment, how to evict someone, when it's legally to evict, and when it's not. What is called retaliatory measures. And when I say retaliatory measures, that means as an owner or a landlord or a property manager, you can't get upset with the tenant because their ceiling is caving in or the plumbing is messed up and they call the inspections department. Or they'll call you and say, hey, look, here's my problem. I need help. I'm paying you the rent. And then you find out you're upset about it. Do not make the statement. If you don't like it here, you can move. That's not fixing the problem. Then nine times out of ten, it'll land on my desk. Because the first step that will happen is that you will get your property sent to the inspection department. And when that goes to the inspections department, you will hear from a gentleman by the name of possibly Chris Lazarus and his department. They're the ones that come out and inspect the premises for structural damage or hazards to make sure it's a safe and habitable location for tenants to live. 
Now, with that being said, how many of you live in the city of Buffalo? I hope that you all do. How many of you own property in the city of Buffalo? Mm, that's a good thing, too. Now, here's the other part you need to know. If you have four properties or more, you should have them up under an LLC or a company. For your own safety, don't leave them in your own name. The reason for that, should you have any legal ramifications on that property, they can not only get you on the property, but in your own personal name. Why would you want to lose everything you worked so hard for? Up under a company, the only thing you lose is what's under the company. So if you have that property up under the company, that's all you run into problems with. But the other part of that is if you have a property and you have more than four, have a licensed property management company facilitating your property. It eliminates you getting caught in the middle of a lot of the circumstances that take place. Most of you take care of your properties on your own, don't you? Yes. Not always the best move. Now, it helps in some areas, but it hurts in others. Because in most cases, you don't know the law. When you go through a property management company, they know the law then they'll use the attorneys that are necessary to eliminate the problems that you'll have in court. When you don't have the proper people helping you do the proper things, you end up seeing my lovely group over here, and you also see me. So what that does is that hinders everything. You feel as though you're being singled out. Others feel as though that you're being singled out, and that's not the case. The bottom line is my job is to enforce the laws regarding fair housing. And you would like for me to enforce that law if you were being discriminated against, as well as the tenants that aren't here that are being discriminated against. At the end of the day, my job is to enforce the law. I'm not picky about it. I don't make the law. I just enforce it. And as Tal can tell you, we've had a very extensive conversation. I think we were there what, for almost an hour and a half talking about all the different circumstances that occur because individuals have not taken the time out to learn the law. Now, in most cases, everybody says, oh, great, I'm going to go get property. I'm going to be a businessman or businesswoman. But they don't take the course to understand what it takes to be a landlord. You cannot come to a tenant's property whenever you choose. You have to give them a 24-hour notice and they have to respond to you to say, okay, I know that you're coming. And that does not mean call them at 8 o'clock at night and tell them you're going to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. That's not 24 hours. Okay? Also, you can't tell them that you're coming. And what I always tell everybody, you give them a list of dates that may be available and see where that works out for everybody. Because the worst thing you want to do is have the community police officer, myself, and inspections there with you because you decided to show up at 9 o'clock at night and just walk into the premises and scare your tenant. You wouldn't want us to do that to you, right? So you have to think of those same things when you're handling your property. Also, make sure you don't get caught into being overly helpful with your friends. If you have friends or relatives that do not live in the city of Buffalo and they own property, do not be helpful. Don't run the property for them. You will see me. It's up under Article 265 of the Building Code and Inspections and Licensing that if you own four or more properties in the city of Buffalo and you do not live in the city of Buffalo, you must have it up under a company and have a licensed property manager handling your business. If you don't, you're in violation. Then you have to go through all those lovely procedures that we go through in order to get you in compliance. My job is not so much to penalize you, but it's to get you in compliance. That means your rental registration, 
certificate of occupancy, making sure the premises are safe for all individuals that are there, things of that nature. Everybody following so far? Yes, yes. Who said no? <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> so this sounds more like this is not so much a lecture. This is information that you need to help yourself. But also make sure you have a good attorney who understands what the laws are in the city of Buffalo, Erie County, New York State, and the federal government. By doing that, it makes sure that everybody is protected in the process. And when you look at that website, it gives you everything involved with what needs to be done. There's even a section in that booklet that talks about, is my lease legal? That means that both parties have to understand that lease. And if they don't, then it's null and void. Okay? Let me say that to you again. If you have a lease agreement, that means your rental agreement, be it a month to month or be it a year lease, if both parties don't understand it, it'll be null and void. Now, I understand that sometimes there are language barriers. If that's the case, then you need to make sure you provide that in their native language or in yours or get an interpreter so that both parties understand what's going on. Also, you must make sure you have something in writing. If it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. You cannot evict anyone without going through the proper process. And do understand, up under the New York State Tenant Protection Act, those laws have changed. From zero to a year, they get 30 days. One to two years, 60 to 90 days. Anything over a two-year period of time, it can take 90 days up to a year to remove an individual from a premises. And that depends on what their hardship is. So if you're trying to remove a family that's a single parent, that has children or handicapped, and you're talking about you want them out on Tuesday, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. The judge is not going to go for it, and your attorney will probably tell you yeah, you might want to wait. And then if it comes down to the fact that we find out that you have a list of violations that are in the office because of disrepairs, and when I say disrepairs, that means that you've got property damage. You have infrastructure problems, you have plumbing, you have electric, you have, and I'm not talking about painting, but if there's no wall to paint, that's a problem. And if the tenant has notified us, the inspection department, myself, in regards to the disrepairs that are happening in that location, and you've done nothing about it, that's another problem. And by law, they have the right to withhold their rent. Don't have, they can't spend it, but they do have the right to hold it until such time you have made the repairs that are required at that location. Make sense? Why should someone pay you to live somewhere? They don't have the proper running water. They don't have proper heat. They don't have proper electrical. It's an unsafe condition. And then they're paying their rent every month, and you're still not repairing it. Doesn't make good business sense, does it? Now, here's the other part. Up under the law, it is called source of income discrimination. You cannot refuse a person that's on Section 8, social services, or any governmental subsidy. If you do so, you're going to see me. It's against the law and that can penalize you unnecessary amounts. You can lose your right to do business in the city of Buffalo. You can also lose your rental registration. You can also be penalized $1,500 per violation per unit. That gets expensive, doesn't it? That's not what you want to do. But you want to be fair with everybody. And I want everybody to understand what those laws are. That's why I want you to make sure that you have an attorney that can help you, make sure you go to the class to help you learn it, and then that way you can facilitate those things accordingly. 
And that's why that website is available to whoever goes on. It's not particular for one group or the other, because I tell landlords all day, if you just do what's on that website, you won't see me. So if you haven't violated any of the tenants' rights that are on there, no reason for me to get involved. But if you do, then we have to do the things that are necessary to get those things worked out. And my job is to try and mitigate the circumstances and make sure we mediate to either get you to fix the premises or we have to do other measures. I would prefer that you fix the premises and be right by the tenant. Because if you don't, then that's a bigger problem. That makes sense? Is that fair? So that's not singling out anybody. That's just saying you wouldn't want someone to do it to you, so I can't let you do it to anyone else. Make sense? My job is not warm and fuzzy, but then when I see multiple individuals in court who I know should be doing things differently, that's a problem. Kyle and I had a very long conversation about those things. And that's when he asked me to make sure I come and talk to you guys today. And we're not only going to do it today, we're going to do it again after Ramadan. So that that way you can have even more individuals here who missed out on this occasion. I do understand it's going to be uploaded to your systems in regards to your network and your community. But I want to make sure that those individuals that have personal questions about different circumstances, they get an opportunity to ask those questions. Now, I know you probably get a lot of them while you're online and things of that nature but we want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to do those things. So the other part of this is to make sure you understand not only from me, but also this gentleman right here, Chris Lazarus, who's over on my left. This is the inspections department. He has some information for you to let you know some of the things you still can't do, even up under the city of Buffalo's inspections law. So I'm going to stop for a moment, let you marinate on what I gave you, Chris is going to come up and give you some more information. And then after Chris, I'm going to have Officer Threat speak with you because he is the community police officer in this particular district. Chris Lazarus. So, Shabaiki, Uni Kothavata, I know it's really fluent English. Shabaiki, Bustasen, Uni Kothavata, and I could have questions. I say, Hon, do the question take up a lake and I can? You know, you can answer Ajara online at the Kassan Igula. Message message that I can then Tara Pore Amra uh, Buffalo Bangla, Ikane um, uh, Asmol Bayase, Ideal TV, Ikane Ase Amade, uh, Droop TV, Time TV, uh, Probashi TV, Amade. So Amra Shobai Ikane Asi. So if you have any questions, just write it down in the screen. And uh, pretty clear, he's being very informative. So if you have any questions, these are really, really bullet points information he was giving. And uh, we'll have. Uh, this brother come and speak right now. Thank you so much. So my name is Chris Lazarus. I'm a building inspector in multiple dwellings and new construction. Um, but I cover uh, the Maston District from Sisters Hospital all the way to Best Street between Main Street and the 33. Uh, so it's a pretty large territory. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you own houses around there. Uh, some of my territory extends out to here, I'm covering areas for other inspectors. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to talk about today is the keeping of animals on the property. So in the city of Buffalo, you're not allowed to have any hooked animals. That means goats, sheep, cows, uh, anything with hooks. Um, you're allowed to keep chickens, but you need to have a permit, and you need to have it in a proper coop. Uh, you're not allowed to have roosters on the property. So if you have them, uh, you have to remove them. Uh, so if you if you know, the only way I find out is if, you know, someone in your neighborhood uh, files a complaint through the 311 system. So then I have to go and investigate it. If I hear the rooster, I'm just going to send you a letter. And then you can call me if you have any questions. Um, as far as uh, keeping chickens, you just have to apply for a permit. And you have to make sure that they're not flying around the neighborhood. They're not running down the street. Uh, just try to keep them in your yard if you can. Uh, then the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, you know, growing vegetables. Try to avoid doing it in your front yard, right in the grass. If you're going to do it, raise them up. Uh, like in a, so like what I'm standing on is like a raised bed, basically. Try to grow your you know, vegetables, corn, anything like that in a raised area, and try to 
keep a fence around it to keep animals and rats and whatnot out. Uh, if you could do it in the backyard instead of the front yard, that would be even better. Um, and the next thing we're going to talk about is rental registration. So if you own uh, any, anything more than three units in the city of Buffalo, that means three units in one building. Um, it's considered a multiple dwelling. And that's where we come and inspect. So multiple dwellings uh, require a rental registration. Uh, you, you pay that rental registration every year, and that basically uh, it gets you an inspection every three years. Every three years, every multiple dwelling, that means anything with three units in the entire city, my department inspects. So we have to come inside and check for life safety, meaning smoke detectors, uh, lighting, the condition of the apartment, uh, egress paths, meaning like uh, emergency exits, whatnot. We check all those things every three years. That's every single building with three or more units in the city. So if you get a phone call from one of us, it's, you know, it's usually because your inspection is due or overdue. We're very behind. Um, so if you get that phone call, if you receive that letter, letter stating that you have a rental registry due, uh, you can come into the, under the third floor in room uh, 304, and you can take care of your rental registration, or you can mail it back in if you'd like. Um, again, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, you know, please see me afterwards. I can give you my card. We can talk about it tomorrow. Um, does anyone have any questions now? Anybody have any questions about chickens? I know I'm on the desi basi on the muru kase vegetable asset. Very important thing. You cannot have, you know, limited chickens, license permit. So I would definitely take this opportunity to ask him as many questions about gardening. You just mentioned something. So is it unpermissible to uh, garden in front with vegetables or how li how limited can you go or extensive because our community loves to garden That's fine. and vegetables primarily. You can't grow on the ground. So just imagine the, the gray section okay. in your front yard. Okay. You, can, you can't do it on the ground. But if you raise the beds, like what we're standing on, so it's above, and then you just fence around that, then you can. So that's a very good point. So if you have to lift it up, maybe uh, build a platform and lift it is mainly because of rodents and uh, am I? Okay. Can we pet the chicken like chicken in our garden area? And how many? There's so his question was how many chickens can he have as a pet? No, there's no limit. Three is the limit. Not more than three? Not legally, no. Permit, you need a permit for that too? So, tinta to no permit or like So, so we need permit even for three? Yes, and you need a proper coop for it. Tinta to no permission like that? 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 How about for one or two? Same. Same. So, maximum three with the permit. I mean, it's no different. Uh, so, I mean, how can they get the permit and, and from where? You can do the permit online, or you can come into room 301 in City Hall and just apply for the permit. I'm not sure what the cost is. Um, I don't work in the permit department, but it's no different than having a dog. Uh, in, in the City of Buffalo, you have to have a permit for a dog as well. Yeah. So if you live in a city and you have a dog and it's unlicensed, if that dog runs away, uh, chances are you're not getting that dog back until you get it licensed. Uh, that also keeps track of who's got animals and who, you know, in case anything, uh, in, these animals get away, at least we know where the owners are. If someone gets bitten, uh, we know how to track down the owners. Uh, so it's very important. Uh, the same way you would, you would keep a permit for a dog, you would have to have a permit for any sort of other animal as well. What about the uh, dog and pigeon? I don't know that off the top of my head, but I will check into it, and I will. I can give you my card, and I can. Uh, you can contact me tomorrow, and I'll, I'll give you an answer. But once again, the permit well, can be found from room number three zero one in City Hall, right? Correct. Yeah. I just like please. Uh, take before before he makes his statement, I want you to understand something that this is an urban area. This is not a rural area. In a rural area, we're talking about farms. 
So there will be different rules and regulations in those locations. You are in an urban city, whereas that there would have to be permitted areas to do different things. You just can't do, if every backyard did their own thing, you'd have new problems. That'd be like somebody drilling for oil in a backyard when you know you can't do that. It's not a commercial property. Just like in farming, you can, you can do your own gardening, but you would normally have to do it in a raised bed area because in some of the cases, you don't know what kind of soil may be there. But also, you have to keep conscious of the fact that you have neighbors. You, you can't have six, seven roosters going off all over the neighborhood, and then you got extra vermin hanging around your neighborhood it shouldn't be there. So if you garden in your front yard and you walk out and you see corn stalks going all around the area, I mean, granted, we're not arguing about your, your gardening, but also you have to be conscious that they have the right to live in a safe and habitable area also. So that's why in most cases we ask people to do it in their backyards because that's your personal space and that can be fenced in and kept safe from anybody doing anything or even damaging your property. Because you know, once the trucks come through with the salt and everything else, it's all in the ground and everything else. You gotta go with fertilizer, you got kids running around. So it becomes more of a health and safety circumstance. So just keep that in mind when you decide to do those things. And that's along with the chickens, the roosters, the pigeons, all of those extra questions that you're asking. Think to yourself, what's the safe path? Is it better for me to keep those in the backyard where I know for a fact it's safe or put it in the front when I know there may be kids in the neighborhood? As children, you know we all have done things as kids. And you see a garden or you see a pet, you're picking with it, you're bothering with it, you're being a kid. But also, you don't want anyone to get hurt. So you want to keep that in mind also. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, my next question is, my neighbor, he has a big dog, pit bull, but late night or midnight sometimes barking too much. Just have our sleeping mode. And some of our tenant also telling us that stop this, your neighborhood and stop this dog's barking. So in this situation, they are not uh, follow our instruction or our request. So in this situation, what can we do for that? Uh, one of the things you can do is uh, you can make it a complaint online to the 311 system, or you can, uh, the 311 system is a, a citywide, um, like a complaint line where if you have any problems, if you find a pothole in the street, if you find, uh, you know, your neighbor is disagreeable, if you have a dog barking problem, or if you you know, if your house is falling down, you can call the 311 system. You can either give your name or you can do it anonymously if you're not comfortable with giving your name. And you can tell them, you give them your address, you tell them where these animals are that are bothering you, and then usually a building inspector will go out there within the next few days to check on it. Of course. Hello, hello, everyone. I am Officer Angelo Threes. I am your community police officer, E District, which is right up the street. All of, most of Maston, all of universities, some of you guys I know. Some of you guys I've seen at, at the uh, Chiefs meetings. Um, just want to kind of piggyback, if you don't mind. Okay, the, the question that you asked. A barking dog. Yeah. In the city of Buffalo, there's a noise ordinance. Okay? And there, you know, there's a decimal noise ordinance, but that ordinance states that if it's called, it's called quality of life. Okay, it's a quality of life ordinance. Yeah. If you are disturbed at any time, because we all have different schedules, what I mean by that is that sometimes I might come home at 7 o'clock in the morning, and if my work schedule is 7 o'clock in the morning and there's a dog barking, then that means that it affects my quality of life. So if it affects your quality of life, you can dial nothing taken away from 311. 311 is great, but you want that taken care of right then and there. Am I correct? So what you dial is you dial 911. If it's something that you want taken care of at that particular time, you dial 911. We are a 24-hour outfit. Now, in addition to 
you dial 311. Because what what will happen then is that if the officers come out and they can't get in contact with, say, the person next door at that time, then they dial through you dial 311. What will what will happen is that it'll generate a number, a complaint. It'll still come back to the police department, but it'll come back to me. Now, I don't take calls when I um, I don't take calls every 20 minutes like patrol officers. I'm your community police officer. So I have time to address those issues. And then what we do is we resolve it and then we report back to 311 to let them know what the resolution is and that's how you address it. If there's something you want done then, then that's the way you address it. Okay, so okay. 311 is the office hour, uh, after office hour, he'll, is he'll it let active? You, he'll let you know 311 out. 311 is a 24 hour thing. You can do it online, you can call in. But, but, but we operate between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So if you call after 4 p.m., it's not going to happen that day. If it's, a, if it's a problem and it's happening right now and you need it dealt with right now, then you would call 911. Okay, we have, we have, we have, we have yeah, thank you, thank you very much. We have a, we have a couple of questions. Uh, one from, yeah, yeah, one from our Thank you. Buffalo machine, Harold তিনি রেস্কিউ টিমের মাধ্যমে তালাবাই এবং উনি যে সিদ্ধান্তটা নিয়েছেন আজকে সভাটা করবেন সেটা অত্যন্ত গুরুত্বপূর্ণ আমরা সেজন্য এই তবে রমজানের আগে পর হইলে একটু ভালো হইতো আমাদের আরো অসংখ্য লোক উপস্থিত হইতো তো আমার কোশ্চেন হলো যে আমরা আসলে সবচেয়ে বেশি মনে রাখতে হবে আইন কি বলে এবং কোরআন কি বলে এই দুটো জিনিস মাথায় রাখি সারা জীবনে সব কিছু করলে আর কোনো সমস্যা থাকে না আইনটা যদি আমরা সচেতন হই তাহলে আমাদের আর কিছু লাগে না আমাদের অধিকার আমরা নিতে হবে আদায় করে এবং আমাদের রাইট কি কি আছে সেটা আমাদেরকে বুঝতে হবে তো সে বোঝার জন্য আজকের এই সভাটা অত্যন্ত গুরুত্বপূর্ণ এবং ওনারা যে আমাদের মাঝে এসে আমাদেরকে যে কোনো প্রশ্নের জবাব দেওয়ার জন্য রেডি আছেন তো প্রশ্ন প্রশ্ন করার আগে তো বুঝতে হবে আমরা কি কি করতে পারব কি কি করতে পারবো না সেই জন্য আমাদেরকে কানেক্টিং যে বইটি দিয়েছেন ওনারা কিছুক্ষণ আগে এখানে আসার সাথে সাথে এখানে একেবারে নিচে কর্নারে একেবারে নিচে লেফট সাইডের যে কর্নারে একটা লঘু আছে লঘুটা থেকে যে ফেয়ার হাউজিং অ্যাক্ট এই ফেয়ার হাউজিং অ্যাক্টটা আপনাদেরকে বুঝতে হবে তো সেই জন্য আমার কোশ্চেনটা হলো আমরা অ্যাজ এ ট্যানেন্ট যখন ল্যান্ডলর্ড হিসেবে আমাদের বাড়িতে ডুকাব কদিন পরে আফটার হাউ মেনি ডেজ আমরা আমাদের নোটিশটা দিতে হবে থ্রি টু সিক্স মান্থ সিক্স টু ওয়ান ওয়ান ইয়ার অর ওয়ান ইয়ার টু মোর ইয়ার দেন আমরা নোটিশ দেব আমার কাছে আফসোস লাগে টু থাউজেন্ড সিক্সটিন ফ্রম টু থাউজেন্ড সিক্সটিন আই এম ডুইং ইভিকশনস কেস ফর অন বিহাফ অফ ল্যান্ডলর্ড বাট আনফর্চুনেটলি গত টু থাউজেন্ড সিক্সটিন টু টিল টু ডে আমি ব্যর্থ হয়েছি আই ট্রাই ইউ গিভ দ্য নোটিস আফটার ফাইভ ডেজ অফ এভরি মান্থ বাট আনফর্চুনেটলি নো বডি গিভিং দ্যাস নোটিস সিক্স ডেজ আফটার থ্রি মান্থ ফোর মান্থ সিক্স মান্থ দেন দে আর টেকিং স্টেপ সো মাই কোশ্চান টু মিস্টার হেরাল্ড যে হোয়েন উই শুড গিভ দ্য নোটিস উই হ্যাভ টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড when as a tenant non paying to the landlord when we should give the notice okay okay i his question wasn't please correct me if i'm wrong uh, your question was if a tenant is not paying right. how long do you have before you can have them out of the premises no, no, no. process eviction right okay there's a couple steps involved in that 
that's when you heard me talk about the New York State Tenant Protection Act. There is a process. If a tenant owes you within 30 days of the month and it's paid before that month is over, you can't evict it. But you do have the right to send out a letter after the 14th day of the month to request payment. That is known as a 14-day notice. They will have to the end of the month to pay that amount. Now, if they don't do so at the end of those 14 days, which will give you a full 30 days, then it becomes a letter of notice of payment. That is hold over, hold over notice. Hold over notice after 30 days. After 30 days, right, right. then you can start your eviction proceed. Right. Now, you will have to have an attorney because that's what the law is. And you can put in for that, and that's why I said no, to no, you make no. sure. I think owner can keep the notice, either 30 days or uh, 14 days. You get 30 days, but if they don't leave, you can't put them out. You still have to go through the court process. Of course. That's why I'm telling you, you have to go to the New York State Tenant Protection Act on that website. It will walk you through that process. The tenant has to be served properly and have to be done by a proper server. They have to have that information that's in their hand. And then if you get to court and they've already paid the rent that you're asking for the back payment on, your case is dismissed. But now the other part with that, you have to make sure that when you're going to court for eviction, that your numbers and the tenant numbers have to be the same. And you only get to go after them for the amount that they owe for the rent. So if it's $400 a month and they haven't paid you for two months, you're only owed $800. You don't get to charge them late fees, attorney fees, and court fees. Right. That law has been removed. So if that tenant shows up and says, I got your $800, that case is dismissed. Now, if you refuse to take the rent, now that's another discussion. Because now you have to go before the hearing officers and they have to find some type of mediation in regards to that. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes, sir. I have one more question. One more? Okay. If, uh, what should landlord if tenant damage the property and complain the health department against the landlord? What should you do? If a tenant is damaging the property. Intentionally. And sometimes they do the intentionally damage. Well, uh, still, yeah. if they damage the property, yes. you still can have them evicted, but you have to go through the process. There's, you can evict anyone. You just have to do it legally. You can't just That's show true. up and That's say, true. okay, I want you out tomorrow. And they may be damaging your property, but you still have to go by the rules. Now it's not about a money issue. It's about now I would like my property back and you want to end their tenancy. So now it's not about just because they damaged the property. Now we know it's not going to get fixed. You're costing me money. Now I want to remove them from the premises, but you have to go through the court process to do so. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Uh, we are going to take another question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. When we are going to make the question, we have to be very much concise about the question. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you and congratulations every house owner of Buffalo. I am one of them. I have a two question of my officer. Uh, I have a, another house, the house have a lower, lower compartment have a one tenant, but I live in the office, up. But my tenant say, I not use the, my backyard for parking my car. He say, he has a disturb. And what can I do? I have a no grace. I live in here with my tenant, but tenant say, you not put the car in my back yet. This is the one question, what can I do? Next question is very serious. Mr. Shoydullah said before, uh, I have a, some of the house here. Today, I, yesterday I come from New York City to give the rent my house, everything good. Now I go to my house, I see 
everything is broken five window or uh, one back door one furnace one hot water tank one freezer and one gas stove is stolen everybody and second my another tenant i say give me money okay i give you money but she she hide time to time go he hide i give the message no answer last time i call police and i open the door i see the whole house is damaged by water he open the water the bathtub sink fast okay. steer and last steer let me, now let me house is damaged what let can i do hold, hold it there's a couple things when i told you when they damage your property you have the right to sue the tenant you can't sue them in eviction court you have to take them to small claims court there are two entirely different courts to evict them you have to go through one court to retrieve your money's back or if you are allowed any money's back you have to go to small claims court there's two entirely different courts so that's what you would go after them on if there was damages in the location and while we're speaking about damages here's the other piece you got to remember that also up under the New York State Tenant Protection Act the law says that once a tenant has left your premises and relinquished back the keys to that location you have 14 days to return their security deposit if you don't return it in 14 days you have to make sure you have documented information in regards to what was damaged and what the cost of those damages were to make sure that it balances out in regards to that security deposit because if you don't return it and that tenant has proof that they left that location in a reasonable sense of habitability you're going to be held liable for it. and then they're going to be able to take you to court for their security deposit so you want to be conscious of that too so there are two parts to that remember if they damage your property and you receive your your property back from the tenant you can take them to court for those damages you can sue them for it. okay thank you thank you thank you no 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 please 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 another question oh. well maybe maybe we can speak oh 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 we we can talk afterwards okay okay brother sure we have to take another right question brother please okay all right Okay, the question is um is there any rules if I like to go my uh, back here my rented house back here still I have to notify the tenant I want to go to because sometime we see the people fill up with the junk the whole back here we get a tickets because of back here is not clean in that situation what should we can do you still have the right to inspect your property it's still your property All we ever tell anyone is to make sure you notify your tenant. The worst thing you want to have happen is that you're there after business hours and you're in the backyard. It's still your property, but if it's a single parent with children and they're in the backyard playing and you come walking up in the backyard, that's not going to make a parent feel very good. Be it a mother or a father. but if you're just there and you let them know and also remember in your rental agreements put in there i will be inspecting the property on these dates every 60 to 90 days i will notify you 24 hours in advance before i'm coming or you will receive something in writing from me be it a text message be it an email be it a letter that it's time for your inspection any you see other how question? easy that is that eliminated a whole lot of problems didn't it okay any any other question from anyone what, yes. what about if, if the landlord already received a summons because the back here is is full of junk is not clean that comes with a letter you let them know that, whose property is it? whose property is it? what did i say at the beginning what do you have in writing if it's not in writing it didn't exist right thank you yes yes uh we have another question from here actually i'd like to address that real quick so 
the bill, like the inspectors write the tickets for trash. So if I was to come to your house and I saw all that trash, I would write you a letter. That letter gives you 30 days to clean up that trash. Then I come back within 30 days. If that trash is still not cleaned up, I write another letter and give you an additional 30 days. So now you've had 60 days to clean up the trash. It also states on that letter, please call your inspector if you have any problem. No one ever calls. No one ever calls us and says, hey, we need some more time. We're having problems with our tenants. Can you give us an extra week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever you need? No one does that, and you guys should all do it. It says right on that letter, every single letter that goes out has the inspector's number who wrote that letter to you. Call that inspector. Tell them what's going on. Almost everyone I work with, they're good, understanding guys. And they, I've never seen anyone say, no, I'm not giving you more time. The only time that you will receive any sort of pushback from me or any other inspector is when the, we send you letter after letter after letter, never gets done. And then, you know, right before you get taken to court, you call me the day before, I really can't do anything at that point. But it takes you at least 90 days to get to that point. So within 90 days, if you can't get that garbage cleaned up, please call us. Every one of us will, I'll come out there, I can talk to your, your tenants sometimes. Um, we also write letters to the tenants. Just the same way that you have responsibilities as a landlord, tenants have a responsibility to take care of the, of the, the apartment that they're living in. So if, if you notice that they're being very messy, call an inspector, tell them what's going on, we can, and you give us the address you know, of the tenant, and we can write them a letter telling them what their responsibilities are, what is expected of them as tenants. So I understand what you're saying, and it's a very tough situation because I know it's your property, and you want to walk up there and clean it up. And if they don't let you, call us. I mean, there's, Carol can get involved. I can get involved. I think the other inspectors can get involved. Um, there's, a, there's, there's quite a lot of options to help you. I understand as a, as a landlord that you have a lot more responsibilities to your tenants, but at the same time, like you do have options, there is a bit like assistance available. Thank you, so, thank you, Inspector. We have we have one one more question from here. Uh, thank you. I have a follow up uh, on that issue. When you see a car left by the tenant without plate, still you issue the ticket to the owner, knowingly that you know this is not landlord car. Why you do that? Did you say if there's a car left? Yeah. Okay. Um, An inspector come and find the homeowner, not the tenant, knowing so, that is this is his. So if there's an unregistered car left in the driveway, okay, you are allowed. You are allowed. So in the city of Buffalo, you're allowed to have one unregistered vehicle, and if that belongs to you, and that vehicle has to be in good mechanical shape, it can't be all taken apart with no tires on it. If uh, someone asked you to move it, you would have to move it. Now, if a tenant leaves a vehicle there. And you, you will get the ticket after, you know, up to the inspector, really. I don't write tickets very often. I will wait 60, 90 days before I start writing a ticket. But if someone leaves a vehicle in your, on your property and you need it removed, you can call Riverside Towing and you can explain to them that someone left the vehicle, it's unregistered, and it's not yours. Riverside Towing will ask you to fill out a document stating that the vehicle is not yours. It's an affidavit. Uh, it's an affidavit uh, where you state that the vehicle is abandoned and they will come and take it from you, no charge. But that's a nice story here, but practically like this never happened. Now, I have a uh, question for Mr. Harold. Uh, I'd like to know your position for fair housing. That's your fair. Number one, you mentioned always go to the court, hire the attorney. Is that uh, necessary? No one can be present without an attorney? Or you are an advocate for the uh, attorney association. Say what you said again. I you heard mentioned part. several times, go to the court, hire an attorney. The is, reason is why that, I tell you to law? hire an attorney yes. is it's because... If not, you cannot represent? You can present it for yourself, That's but, not question. No, no. but if your properties are up under a corporation, you cannot. You have to have an attorney. You are fair housing. Are you fair? We did not get rent three years almost, but you said we must pay the rental fee, which is double. We rescued the buffalo. You are getting salary from our money, and how we get help 
for that rental registration, you doubled up, would you not get paid from the tenant and we cannot evict them. Not only that, if you mention that we got housing money support from the federal governor, those tenants never cooperate with us. They left. Okay. First of all, first, first, relax, relax. First, first of all, in regards to what the law is, I enforce it. I don't make it. Okay. Hold it. Hold it. You asked a lot of questions. I'm taking them one at a time. The rental registration has nothing to do with me. That has to deal with the inspections department and owning property that you are, hold it, hold it. You asked the question, you want, you want me to answer it or not? Rental registration is part of what the city of Buffalo and the department of inspections permits and licensings. That is part of their understanding and agreement in regards to individual who have property that they are using for rental purposes. Whether you like it or you don't, I don't make the law, I just enforce it. Not my fight. There's many of laws that are on the books in a lot of cases that a lot of us don't particularly care for, but they're not the ones that we get to pick and choose on what we enforce. That's part of my job. The other part you were saying is that where does your money go? Your money goes with the opportunity to do business in the city of Buffalo. You are using your property to extrapolate income. So in the process, you have to have a business license, don't you? Am I correct? You have to have a business license. Rental property is a business. No, there is no discount. No, it's, no you, you're asking for help. And why you got to pay it, it's because that's what the fee is. You got into a business to make money, correct? Yeah. I, I, yes or no? You, your court stop eviction. And them, not Sir, we stopped evictions yeah. during the pandemic. And that was for everybody. We made sure that if you were a tenant and you lived in those locations, the the, uh, hold it. You open the door, I'm just going to finish sentences so I can close it. The funding that was available was for everybody. Some people did it correctly, some did it incorrectly. Those that did it incorrectly, they are learning their fate. Those that did it correctly received the monies to do whatever they did some did the correct thing by using the monies that they received up under those programs to assist in repairs and back rent. And the law did not tell anyone that they didn't have to pay their rent. What they said is if you are eligible and you can pay your rent, to do so. But here are a couple of programs that are available by the federal government and the city of Buffalo that may make you eligible. Some landlords were eligible, some were not. And then some of the things were not done correctly. Now, your next question. Harold, I asked you, those tenants, they are not cooperating. That was my question. You were getting the phone. Who knows the phone? We, we have some other questions. Yes. I'll take them next. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. We, we are gonna, we're going to get another question. Just, just to finish my answer with you. Now, everybody, by a show of hands, how many of you did I tell if you wanted to remove your tenant to take them to court? Everybody in here heard me say the same thing, correct? All I said to you is that you had to do it legally. Did I not? That rule didn't change, did it? Did you? No, no, no. You, you're past your three level on the questions. <laughs> I got yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. We have, we have one, one question here. All right. I would recommend you Hello? see me after the fact. I would recommend that you see me afterwards. I said I'd recommend that you see me afterwards so that you and I can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation instead. No, no, no. Because there's other people that have questions. You have to be fair to everybody else. 
I think he has a lot of expression to tell you because he, we got you at the first time. <laughs> a lot of us, a lot of questions. Don't feel bad, you know. We it's understand. Okay. We greatly appreciate that you made you time. And you came, you love us. That's why you came here to give thanks. That we can, we believe you. We, great, we greatly appreciate all of you folks who came here. I think this is not the first one. We will do more. Yes. The question is, there are a lot of questions. If we start questioning, then it will not be finishing. Because little, little question we have. But simply what we, I'm trying to say, that if you can give some guidance or template to start the process of the eviction, because we are tired. The landlord, all of us, very tired. You, you cannot believe it, how bad they are. They're, they're no negotiable person, no cooperating. Some of the tenants, like, they know some rules. Like, there is a rules, like, if something wrong with the house, then we cannot collect the rent. That's why I said every one of you that are landlords and have property, that you have tenants, that you should take the landlord training course. That course is available at home, Housing Opportunities Made Equal, at Main Street and West Ferry here in the city of Buffalo. You can reach out to them and they will tell okay. you when those courses are available. And I would recommend to each one of you that you take it. That way it will help you understand what the laws are in regards to screening tenants, what to charge tenants, how to facilitate your business. These are things that will help you going forward. So I understand the frustration when you don't know the law. So now these are a process to help you learn the law and help you understand what it is to be a good landlord, but also what to expect from a good tenant. And remember, this is a business. It's not a relationship. So sometimes you will get the stories of, oh, I'm going through this, my cat, dog, my, my dog and my cat, my kids, I just lost my home, can I get in? You say yes on Tuesday and you find out, wait a minute, <laughs> you're a mass murderer, no, we can't let you in. So, there's a reason, but you have to make sure you do your due diligence in regards to making sure that you have done your due diligence as a landlord and you've done the proper background check on individuals, just like they're going to do background check on you. They want to make sure the property is in a safe and habitable location. They want to make sure that there's a full list. If you go on that website and you pull up that information in regards to tenants' rights, the first set of pages give you a lot of verbal discussion in regards to what's involved. And then you look at the rest of the booklet, it gives you a complete checklist on what should be in an apartment. And if those things are not in the apartment, you shouldn't rent it. And then think of it yourself. Would you want your mother, sister, brother, cousin living in that location? If you step on the floor and you feel like you're about to go through the floor, that's probably not that safe. If your water is coming out brown and green, that might be a problem. So you want to make sure you use those same thought processes when you do that. Did I answer your question, sir? You good? All right. Mr. Howard, I'd like to ask you some questions. Yes, sir. If that, I think this would help. I know that uh, when we sat down and we talked, you told me that some of our community members from Bangladesh community are also in trouble and they seem to be facing some situations on your table which you couldn't tell me their names, right? And you had elaborated some of those stories that some of the brothers are doing. Um, these are the things that uh, we want to avoid, especially coming to your table. So so everybody again, Shobai Jata understand Kori. He is at the fair housing level top. So getting first, you get a notice, then you go to the, the inspectors, and if you're not cooperating with the inspector, you're not cooperating with the judge, then it goes to him. So he's at the extreme level. So he's, he's here. This is the gentleman still at 7.30. He's giving us time. We really appreciate it. Let's just make sure we give him another round of applause so we can give his energy back not a problem. Thank you. But no. what we're saying, there is a few of our community members right now in jeopardy. They are community by brother. People are Pondo John and Moto on his table. Some of the issues that he told, if I can share that, so what, what can, you can, you can you're of, sharing them, I'm not yeah, sharing them. Okay, one of the issues that he told me, uh, they, 
বাড়ি আজকে কিনছে কালকে গিয়ে নক করে বলতেছে ইউ গার মুভ আউ বোথ দ্য হাউস টুডে ইউ গো টু নাক অ্যান্ড দ্য ডোর গেট আর দ্য হাউস আই এম মুভিং ইন দ্যাটস নট again that's against the law this is not you're not a pro- following the process you cannot do that this is what's happening in our community a lot you there's a process once you buy a house and you have to follow that process second thing that's happening is one of the things that he had mentioned that one family they the tenant didn't move out right away they build a wall cut the dining room table and build a wall and put a bed and st- slept over there so that's absurd right I think these are the things that is all about education factors and this is something we have to understand this can get you in a lot of trouble not a little bit trouble second thing is uh, sh- that most important everybody here now the city is changing every house here 93% of the houses are built before 1980 93% that means everybody's house has lead poison everybody most in the, unless you have a brand new house after 1980 so we're all faced with lead violations everybody has if you don't have it today you will have it tomorrow i guarantee you so what's the situation is he told me what what that happens you get a notice in your house for lead violation you didn't remedy that issue then what happens is you get a notice in your door do not occupy and you still occupy you wind up on his desk that's a serious matter this is like you you're incriminating yourself for very small things and this is something how can we avoid ourselves from getting on your table i think this is one of the biggest fear for us because it is going to cost us a lot more in attorney fees to get ourselves out of that trap than now to resolve it and this is the person that's here volunteering his time to make sure he he made this meeting i'm telling you again very urgent the reason he made it urgent i told him let's have it after ramadan he said no your your community needs to hear this message because there's some certain things that he's going to take action on immediately and he wants to avoid that from happening so he wanted to give you that information before he does because once he puts us in that process and the workload gets hard on him he's going to go full force with the attorney general and everybody so that's why we want to make sure we avoid that situation is that correct that is mr correct. howard cardwell and what there are multiple programs for everybody there is actually a homeowner program to remediate lead circumstances. There is training that is available that homeowners to, they can go through. And it teaches you how to remediate lead. It tells you how to clean it, how to repair it, how to paint it. And then you're certified by them to let them know that you can repair and you can remodel because you took those courses. And that's something that you can do as owners and have that certification then that way that saves you money but also it makes it safer for you as well as your tenants so then when you go to rent your home you can let them know that this has been lead remediated and i'm certified to do so so now that helps you with section 8 belmont the city of buffalo erie county state so that covers that area because now you're a certified individual that knows how to correct those problems make sense So we have one more question yes, here. Mm. Uh, I got a water bill, single water bill, $1,200. After I get the bill, I contact with my tenant uh, and ask him what happened, why the water bill this much. He's saying there was a leaking, but tenant didn't let me know that there was leaking. What can I do in this point? Well, the first thing is, it's your property. The other part with that, that's when I said to make sure you inspect your property. If you see a spike in your water bill or the gas bill, if your gas is paid with your rent, if you see a spike in your cost, you might want to have that checked because then that means you have an issue. But if you have an inspected your property and you don't have a licensed property manager checking your property, then that becomes a problem. But that's not the tenant's fault. If the water was leaking when he got there and he said, "Hey, look, you know, you got a leaky faucet." Most of us all say, "Turn it a little tighter." We don't really worry about it. But if your water is on a meter, you will know more about it in a shorter period of time than most of us. 
We really don't worry about it until that leak becomes a constant drip. And then it becomes a stream. That usually means the faucet needs to be replaced. So it's up to you to make sure, and this goes back to what I said in your lease and rental agreements, in regards to letting the tenant know that I will be out to inspect the property every 90 days or six months, whichever the case may be. That way you have a better understanding on what's happening on your property, right? And making sure that you let them know 24 hours in advance before you go and visit. Mr. Harold, uh, there yes, was one sir. question that was in Bangla. Yes. I'm, I'm just translating that. The question is, you know, sometimes the homeowners or, 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 the, or the landlords, they are getting some notice which they are not responsible for. Basically, those damage were made by the tenant by, by putting the trash outside, by, by making the floor, you know, filthy and that get the roaches and stuff and for which they get, you know, uh, notice from the Section 8 and the Section 8 get closed. So, I mean, in this situation... Well, there's two things with that. Yeah. There's two pieces with that. With inspections, myself, Section 8, there's a list of violations that you'll receive. In their notation, and please, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. In the notation, it'll state what is the owner's responsibility, and then it'll state what the tenant's responsibility is. And when they talk about cleanliness, that's usually the tenant's responsibility because you're not living in their apartment space. But if there's debris and garbage outside and the trash cans are busted up and things of that nature, that's why you pay the user fee. The user fee, if your garbage cans are damaged and they're not working anymore, that's why you call 311, let them know, they'll replace them, okay? But if it has to deal with the cleanliness of the apartment, that's on the tenant. And then if there's not a notification given to the tenant in regards to that, again, what did I say? If it's not in writing, it didn't happen. And in most cases, one thing I want you all to remember, there is always a clash of cultural experiences. In each culture, everybody looks at things differently. But as the law, I go across with a clear slate. I, I don't pick cultural circumstances or not. I tell people that this is the law. You have to do it this way. That eliminates those things. And for those of you gentlemen who are normally going to these locations, that's why putting it in writing eliminates your headache. If you don't put it in writing, that means via text message or an email or a letter. That protects you and it protects your tenant. Does that answer your question? Yes, brother. I, I, believe, I believe it answers the question. Okay, there was one question. I don't know whether that, that falls under this jurisdiction or not, but you know, he... He, he What's the question? worst that can happen? We, we know the answer or not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he questioned that, okay, I mean, if his neighbor has a very big tree and that is damaging his house, Oof. what is that jurisdiction fall under to? I'll let that one go over here. So, any tree that hangs over your property, you can cut back to your property line as long as you don't kill the tree. So, if you have a very large tree hanging over most of your property and you've asked your neighbor to, you know, cut it back and they refuse, you can take that tree back to the property line, provided that you do not kill the tree. Does that make sense? Okay. It's your, I mean, anything that hangs over your property, you can take off, you can hire someone, you can do it yourself, from the ground to the sky, is like, as he said. But if you have to make sure that you're not cutting it so far back that you're killing the tree. I see. Um, any of that brush that lands on your property, if it does any damage, again, call inspections. I mean, I go out for trees quite often. Um, and while I'm on this topic, actually, I forgot to mention it earlier, as far as fences go, you don't need a, a, a permit to put up a fence. But it's very important that you don't put up a fence uh, over four feet from the front of your house to the back of your house. You can go six feet from the back corner of your house to the back of your lot and all the way around, but you cannot put a six-foot fence or eight-foot fence or anything that exceeds 48 inches, four feet from the front of your property to the back corner of the house. Okay, I mean, what happens if the if if the, if the tree was like say say like two feet diameter and now it gets like eight feet diameter and that comes to my property, 
from the from the neighbor, what happens then? The best thing to do is to talk with your neighbor. That's the first thing. And the neighbor usually know if you're damaging the property. So you want to talk with them to see if you can come to a happy medium. Because unfortunately, the tree is a force of nature. You're kind of stuck with it, but you guys would like to work it out. Okay. Okay. So what, just one last question, okay? You've got me for another five minutes. Okay, just one last question. Good evening. Thank you for coming today. Uh, I have two quick questions. Number one, uh, how can we check the background for the tenant when we uh, like when we like new tenant coming up? How how do we check their background? And number two, uh, what are the legal documents we can have from a tenant so in further future, if any uh, in any circumstances circumstances we can take action because. From the beginning, I don't have a lawyer or nothing. So if there is a problem, so you know I can do something. Or so these two questions, please. Here, here's the first part of your question. You. Take the landlord training course. That's the first part of that question, because in that class it teaches you how to do those things that you asked. The other part of it is that your rental agreement is what assists you in going after bad tenants. If you don't have that information in writing at the beginning, that's the first problem. And also understand, folks, you can only get one month's rent and security. Security can only equal one month's rent. There is no more first, last, and security. That usually would be about $3,800 in most cases. Now, if the rent is $600, the deposit can only be $600. So when they first come into the apartment, it can only be $1,200 involved. Does that make sense? Did I answer your question? As an owner, when you go, now do you have one property or do you have multiple properties? One property. There's a system that's available for you to be able to do background checks on tenants. You can ask for their license, um, and also you can ask for their social security number. Um, starting to ask for too many pieces, it starts to throw a red flag up on everyone, because then they're starting to ask, well, how do I know my information is secure? Just like you don't want everybody to know your child's security number and where your firstborn is and things of that. You have to use proper process. Let me say it that way. And there are agencies out there that can do that work for you, okay? Because unfortunately, like I said in the beginning, you have good tenants, you have bad tenants. You have good landlords and you have bad landlords. That's across the line, okay? Does that answer your question? You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Cardwell. Uh Actually, I, I think, I, oh, one, one question, okay, that's the this last This will be the last one. One, one last question, okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, sir, thank you to be here, and uh, I am uh, so glad I, I, I am going to ask. Is the money? tree, is it in the section between the sidewalk and the curb, or is it on the section between the sidewalk and your house? The road coming uh, under the sidewalk to my house, and it's so deep. But I, is it in between the sidewalk and the curb, then it's the street? Or is it on the part on the other side of the sidewalk, where is that it's in your front lawn and your house? Okay, uh, the sidewalk is spread like this. Okay. I, I complain, and the uh, city uh, did the new sidewalk, and okay. after, after two months, sidewalk again cracked and... Uh, you and would call the city. That sounds as if it's the city's tree. Yes, and in the same, same trees, the uh, few weeks ago, the process said... I Hold that thought. Let me get you to the right person. Okay. Hold on, hold on. It's not...
Not down. Um, I can give you my card tomorrow, and we can, I mean tonight, and you can call me tomorrow. Oh, thank and I can you. direct you through it. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I got a form from city. City uh, mentioned I have to call two licensed contractor. The house right now in city of Buffalo is so damaged. If we call licensed contractor and fix it to buy a licensed contractor every time, every word, we cannot live here. We don't have that much money to pay the licensed contractor for every word. We have a handyman. We do a lot of work by ourselves. The homeowner did it. So if I call licensed contractor to give me estimate, they don't come here for only estimate. They know it's for only estimate. It's not the work will be done. So the city form, uh, the, the, the said, um, I have to give, submit two estimate to get the damage by the city trees fall on my property. So right now, my porch railing broke, uh, one corner of the roof broke, and the railing is still there. I can't find two licensed contractor. I called one, they don't show up. So what kind of help we, we are getting from city of Buffalo? My home foundation lived up by the trees, road, and I, I want this, this Let me Let me stop you right there, there for a second. Hold on, hold on. There's a couple things with this. One, you, you have a particular issue, and that tree probably was damaged due to the weather. So it was what we call an act of God. So unfortunately, that's the first problem. The other good thing about this is that nobody was hurt. Am I correct? Okay. So the other part of this... The reason why they have you get multiple estimates is so that they can gauge what's happening, okay? And then that's just part of that process. But it's recommended that you follow that and also having homeowner's insurance gets involved in that also, okay? But I would recommend you take the time out and use the direction from Inspector Lazarus to give his office a call and then that way you guys can walk through that. Fair enough? All right. Thank you, Mr. Carlo. I think, I think all of you, I know that we're past time. <laughs> I thank you all from our mayor of the city of Buffalo, Byron W. Brown, also the chairman of Bureau, vice chairman, Brenda Mahaffey. I'm Harold Cardwell. I'm the fair housing officer for the city of Buffalo. Also, we have Officer Three, Angelo Three. He is our community police officer for this district. We also have Chris Lazarus, who is an inspector in the city of Buffalo also. Please take the time to read the information that we gave you. If you have any questions, problems, or concerns, feel free to contact our offices accordingly. But also, remember, that information is available to you to read and to help you understand it. And also, it doesn't hurt to get legal advice. Check with your attorneys to make sure that you have the proper information to do the proper service so that you are not put behind the eight ball and have to deal with us on the other side of that. We'd rather help you than hurt you. We want you to be in our city, but we also want you to be a good businessman in our city. No different than you want us to be a good person to do business with. Is that fair? We thank you all. We will see you again. Thank you, Mr. Carwell, and please put your hands together. Put your hands together for Mr. Carwell. Thank you very much. Everything has to be written, okay? Brother, do, do we still remember the biggest verse in Surah Baqarah? The verse number 282, okay? So, inshallah, we're going to educate ourselves so that we don't have to end up with his table. Thank you very much once again.